Hello everyone. I've released the next two portions of the class. And because there's several components to each, I wanted to walk you through what's going to be asked of you and the due dates. So let's begin by looking at the Learning Space Design section. To start, there's a bunch of reading. You're going to read Campfires in Cyberspace and open the windows to provide a little bit of a context the way I think about space. I'll then ask you to read five articles on the importance of space. And after you've read all five, you're going to visit the Why Space Matters discussion forum and post just a brief re reaction to what you've read. And specifically, I'm just interested in what impacted you most from the readings. You're then going to review the 78 design principles from the third teacher. You'll select five principles that resonate with you to create the type of learning environment you want. And then in the design principles forum, you'll briefly describe those five principles. And then I'd like you to discuss how you think each of these might impact your thought process as you begin to address your design challenge. You'll find the 78 design principles in the Learning Space Design module. Next is a series of five readings on learning space. Two are from Blueprint for Tomorrow, and three are from an ISTE book titled Get Active. Now, one of the things I want to point out is a lot of these texts deal with learning space design in K-12. But the principles are applicable to all levels. So as you work through the readings, especially through the Get Active, for the Your Turn activities that they'll ask you to do, if you're in higher ed or some other adult learning situation, just go ahead and adapt what you're doing to your particular situation. Along with these readings, you're going to do some research on your own to find some resources on learning space design. We're going to use a software package called Evernote to help collect the resources that you find. So let's take a look at that real quick. Here's Evernote, and I have five notebooks that I've created that have resources on learning space design. Let's say I'm interested in adult education, so I'll look at my adult notebook. And here are a series of resources that I have collected on learning space design. The first thing that I'll ask you to do is just quickly browse through these resources and see if there's something that looks interesting to you. And I do mean quickly, just kind of space through here, look through here. And as you're looking at all of these resources, you need to keep in mind, this is where I dump everything that I find on learning spaces. And I may or may not have been able to come in and uh, curate it. So for example, if you see a tag that says needs review, and that's what you're gonna find on most of these, it means that I haven't gone back in to determine whether this is a worthwhile resource or not. So as you work your way through these various resources, there may be some garbage here and that's fine. If you do find a resource like that, I will ask you to add the meta tag, not useful. So as I start to type the tag in, it will help me autofill it. And I'll just add the tag, not useful. Now, this actually is a useful resource, so I'm going to delete that tag. But you'll go through, and the very first thing you'll do is you're going to find five resources that are of interest to you and you're going to do a quick review of them. What you'll do is you'll read through the resource and then you will add some sort of an annotation. So something like this article was very useful and why. When you do that, I will also ask you to tag it with your name. Now I'm gonna use one of the atoms as an example. So as I start to type Adam, you'll notice I have Adam D, Adam Davey, and Adam Walker. So I will just go ahead and add that as a tag. So you're going to go in and you're going to review five of my resources. Then you're also going to add five new resources to the notebook. Now to add a new note, you just click up here. 
Now, I've provided a few videos to help you with Evernote. And so as soon as you set up your Evernote, please let me know your Evernote username and I will send a share request for the notebooks that I have. The final activity that I'll ask you to do in this section of the overall project is to prepare a learning space thought paper. So you'll go through all of the resources, you've reviewed your five resources, added five new ones. I'll ask you to prepare a brief paper summarizing your thoughts. And these are the issues that I'd like you to think about. Now I put paper in quotes because you can use any format you'd like. You'll submit this as part of your project website. So that's it for learning more about learning spaces. To help you keep on track, I have posted some due dates. I'd like you to do your Why Space Matters post by Friday, April the 1st, your five principles post by Wednesday the 6th, then the activities, the your turn activities from Get Active Readings should be posted to your website by April the 15th, your review should be done by April the 20th, and your thought paper should be done by the 20th as well. Now you want to make sure that you're also familiar with the design project portion. And in this portion that matches the experimentation phase of design thinking, you're going to actually create a model of your learning space. So let's look at that in a little more detail. To begin this portion, you're going to review everything you've done so far. You're going to look over your design challenge and what you've learned about learning space design. And you're going to think about developing or renovating a space or spaces that will address your design challenge. Now I'd like you to think about this as a fairly blank check project, so don't be constrained by budget. Instead, really let your imagination go, but also ground it in the ideas that you generated in the ideation process. To get you thinking, after you reviewed all these materials, I'd like you to do a brief post in the preliminary thoughts discussion forum. And I'll ask you to just talk about three things. Just a brief discussion of the design and learning principles that you're going to use in designing your space, a discussion of the potential audience, and a rough description of what you think the space will look like. Now, I fully anticipate that once you get into building your model, you're going to find that this will change, and that's fine. You'll then begin to build your model, and I provided you with the criteria that I'll be using to evaluate your model. As you create your model, I'll ask you to provide some documentation. First, the context, the instructional context of the space, the principles that you're using, a description of the space and how the specific components demonstrate these principles, and you should include screenshots, a description of the anticipated learning activities, and a discussion of how your space addresses the issues and ideas raised in your design challenge. You'll provide a copy of your model, and you can decide whether this is simply a URL or whether you might embed your model. You'll also provide supporting documentation. Now the meat of what you're doing is here in the discussion section, specifically items three, four, and five. The supporting documentation is basically to get over limitations of using floor planner. So for example, here is a space that I'm working on at UA South. And you'll see it has a variety of different components. And I put some components in it, like these dividers. The problem is that's not exactly what I want them to look like. So what I'm going to do in my supporting documentation section is show what the room will look like and add some annotations. So those easels are actually verb whiteboards and the chairs are something called a node chair. So I'll go off to the various furniture manufacturers and there are links to those in the resources section and I'll grab pictures of what these things actually look like. Because Floor Planner, for example, 
didn't have any sort of an image that would match the node chair. So you'll use this supplementary documentation to show us what things will look like that you can't build into your model because of the limitations of Floor Planner. You'll use software called Floor Planner. And there's a pro version of Floor Planner, but I just want you to use the free version. There are also many other 3D modeling programs, and you're welcome to use those if you'd like. However, I've picked this because it has a fairly low learning curve. As I mentioned, you'll share your project either by embedding it, where you'll copy the code from the embed code and place it into your website. You'll need to know how to create an HTML element, or you can put a link. Now, along with either embedding or including a link, I'll ask you to email me a copy of your plan. Now, what's critical in your email, in the message body, please put your name. Otherwise, I get a really generic file name. Now, the last portion of this project is you will present it to your colleagues. And this will be the last two Wednesday meetings that we have. You'll have 30 minutes to talk about your space. And you'll see that the things I ask you to talk about are basically the things I ask you to talk about in the context. And you should also provide within your 30 minutes, approximately five to 10 minutes to gather input from the meeting participants. I have a Google Doc for you to sign up. And remember, you can practice your presentation by creating your own meeting space in the ETC Chris and Friends space in D2L. If you need help, I'm always willing to meet with you in Connect so either we can talk about or practice your presentation. Now in doing your presentation, you can go into share my screen mode to show us your project. And this works well. Just remember that due to slow refresh rates, you have to be careful and methodical in your movements when you're, especially if you're rotating your 3D model. Now, because of this, most students have done a more formal presentation using PowerPoint or similar presentation software. So you're more than welcome to do that. If you happen to have a PowerPoint file that you want me to load ahead of time, make sure that you submit it to the presentation files Dropbox by 5 p.m. the day before the presentation. So I will ask you to post your preliminary thoughts by Friday, April the 22nd, and the presentations will be April the 27th and May 4. Your model and all supporting documentation should be posted to your website by the end of class on Wednesday, May the 4th. That's the remainder of the course, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.